Wait, little kitty. That's not jelly, but a jellyfish. Please stay away from it. Fish? Yummy too. Oh, no, no, no. Not the one you can eat. A jellyfish is venomous. Phew. Hey, friends. In today's episode, let us speak into the lives of these beautiful gelatinous creatures we call jellyfish and answer a stingy question. How does a jellyfish sting? Zoom in! Jellyfish, we can find them free swimming in the ocean all over the world with their umbrella-shaped bells and trailing tentacles that hang down underneath them, kind of like an octopus. Their bodies are soft like jellies as they are 95% water and are primarily made of a transparent gel-like substance called mesoglia. And you won't believe, despite their name, jellyfish aren't actually a type of fish. Yes, as we know, fish are vertebrates that live in water and breathe through their gills. On the other hand, jellyfish are invertebrates, meaning they have no backbone and absorb oxygen from the water through membranes. So, to survive with such fragile bodies, nature has gifted them with thousands of venom-containing stinging cells called cnidocytes located at their tentacles, while some species have them on their bells too. They use these stingy cells to catch and eat other sea creatures and protect themselves from possible threats. Let us see how. If we zoom onto their tentacles, we'll notice that each stingy cell, that is, the nidocytes, are loaded with venomous harpoon-like hollow tubules called nematocysts, which rest coiled under high osmotic pressure. When an external agent triggers the touch-sensitive hair-like projections, the lid of the cells pops open, making way for water to rush in. And zoop! This pressure forces the microscopic barbed harpoon to shoot out, injecting the venom into its prey. And you won't believe, all this process occurs in a millionth of a second making it one of nature's fastest biomechanical processes. Nematocysts continue to be functional even after the jellyfish has died, so it's crucial to pluck off the stuck tentacles ASAP with a pair of tweezers to minimize the damage. But even after that, it leaves thousands of stingers in the skin. So to inactive them, it's best to rinse a sting with vinegar. Vinegar is a weak acid that might keep the stingers from firing for some kinds of stings. So, it is always advisable to carry a small container of vinegar and a pair of tweezers in your beach bag. Some experts suggest that salt water could also help eliminate remaining nematocytes. However, this theory is still debatable. But what everyone agrees upon is not to use fresh water. Yes, my dear friends, that's because any shift in salt balance will change the osmotic pressure inside the cells, which will activate the nematocyst to shoot. And that's why, despite popular belief, urinating on the affected area could be a terrible idea as it could make the matter worse, depending upon the composition of the urine. Remember, my friends, although jellyfish stings are painful, followed by red marks, itching, numbness, or tingling with a typical sting, fortunately, most are not emergency cases. But when it comes to some types of jellyfish, such as the box jellyfish, also called sea wasp, 
Their stings can be very dangerous and can even be fatal. So, in that case, the person needs to call the ambulance ASAP to get the right medical help within the right time frame. And to avoid any danger in the first place, make sure to swim only at guarded beaches where you are more likely to get a warning about jellyfish from lifeguards. Trivia time! Did you know scientists have evidence that jellyfish have been bobbing along in the world's ocean for at least 500 million years? This means they are older than the dinosaurs. Also, the largest species of jellyfish, the lion's mane, has tentacles that can grow up to 120 feet, which is longer than a blue whale. Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ugh, never mind.